when I speak at the mouth level, two, two systems should work together in harmony, very important. The biological system and the psychological system. The articulation is very important and this pronunciation is not only in terms of articulation it is important, but also as a spiritual practice. Why? See, spiritual practice means there should be some transformation that is going on in the physical system also. Because spirituality means it's the whole thing, mind, body, spirit, all the three things are integrated. So, that means by reciting these, the body gets activated in the proper direction, proper orientation. And when we produce a Mahaprana, Pa, Ka, Ta, Dha, so you are producing with the energy coming out from the Nabhi, below Nabhi. So when we are all the time saying that we are making conscious effort to bring the energy upward and then it cleanses the whole thing. Namaste. Thank you for the organizers of uh, Srijan Foundation and Srijan Talks. And thanks for all of you to be uh, here making time in the busy schedule. Chaitanyam Sarvabhutanam Vivrutam Jagadatmana Nada Brahmatada Advitiya Mupasmahe. We salute to that Nada Brahma, which is present in every conscious being as consciousness. And that consciousness is all pervading has manifested as a joyful universe. So we will see the signs of sound in Hinduism. And let me start with uh, a statement from a very well-known scientist called uh, Sir William Bragg, who in his book, The World of Sound, says a very nice and a very instruct in an introspective way, we say that we hear a sound, which means that somewhere or other, an air quare has been started and has reached our ears. As the life and processes of the world go on the actions which take place are accompanied by these act tremors and we live in this world of sound. As the fishes live in the world of water, we all live in the world of sound. And that makes this topic very, very personal to us and makes it equally universal. There is one thing which is both personal and universal, this is this field. And we will see how and why. So, saying that word, sound is all pervading, the ubiquity of acoustics, as you see here, is well shown in this beautiful diagram. We have sciences of the earth and atmosphere, where we see the various aspect of the acoustics that come in here, in the atmosphere around the earth, and even a little bit above the earth, as you can see. And then we have the engineering sciences, 
where in all aspects of engineering, I personally been trained in mechanical engineering, is doing acoustics and likewise civil engineers, chemical engineers, electronic engineers, everybody sees sound. And then human and social sciences, we know that it's part and parcel of the fields here. We have the music, speech and psychology bring to life and health sciences. So it's all pervading, but these three we see in a very close connection between here, the physiology, the speech and the music. And so we see here, <coughs> now what is the connection between the science of sound and Hinduism? And when I was looking at these uh, murtis, vigrahas as we call, we all go to temple, Hindus, right? And we stand in front of these murtis. And most of the murtis we know is in some artistic uh, message that they are giving. And in particular we have the Krishna who is having the Shankha, which is basically, as you heard, is, is the producing sound, even in the Murti, as you can see, focus, the sound is coming. Only thing is, we have to hear it. And we will come to that aspect of sound also. There is sound that, which is not heard, which is unmanifest. Then we have the Lord Shiva with the drum. And the drum is a symbolic uh, medium of production of sound from our human system. And then of course we have Krishna's flute and flute itself is a representation of our human uh, body. And also it has been recognized, you know, the same as we say, the magic of flute. Then Rabindranath Tagore in the Gitanjali says, Make me like a flute of reed to fill with thy music, he says. It's, a, it's also a, a, a literary inspiration as we see. And of course we see Goddess uh, Saraswati, who is playing the Veena, and again Veena refers to the human body. We will see how. So we see in all these uh, murtis that there is a dynamic message that is coming through which is closely connected to what we hear as sound. Then we have, so where do we go for the literature of science of sound in our Vedic uh, uh, literature? So here I have represented the Vedic literature as an inverted tree. And uh, this is also very uh, symbolic. What we see the tree outside of course, the roots below, the branches above. But the reality is the other way. That means the source of all manifestation come from above, from the invisible, unseen to the manifest, unmanifest, unseen, unmanifest to the manifest. And we ourselves actually are a representation of the inverted tree because all our thoughts and ideas do come here and then it gets manifested through our speech and our limbs. So we are the inverted trees. And that is why in the process of meditation, the energy is, the goal is to go upward, urdhva, urdhva, mati, urdhva, like one of the tantric uh, Poet says, go upward. Urdhvaretam virupaksham vishvarupaya vai namo namaha. So that is the symbolism of the inverted. Urdhva mola madashakam ashvatham prahuravyayam chandansi yasya paranani yastam veda saveda vit. In chapter 15 in Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavan Krishna tells that. So all of these are symbol, uh, symbolic. And here we see, when we 
look at the root the root as i said is the source and the source is referred as brahman and also we see in the manifestation the substratum also becomes brahman so source and substratum is brahman and this brahman that we refer has two aspects two sides of the same coin the amruta bindu upanishad says very clearly that dev brahmani veditavye shabda brahmam parancha gata shabda brahmani nishnatah param brahmadhi gachati so there are verily two brahmans that every human being has right has qualification to aspire for everyone no one is excluded in the pursuit of brahman truly democratic everyone and in that pursuit there are two brahmans one is the shabda brahman and other is the para brahman and shabda brahman is the step to para brahman so that is the meaning of this beautiful upanishadic statement then of course we all know the name and form of brahman is omkara om iti brahma in the taittiriya upanishad it says om is brahman basically what it means is tasya vachaka pranavaha the name and the form of brahman is omkara it is not an alphabet but it is a rupa but when you make it through the assembly of varnas then it becomes akara ukara makara then also yoga vartika says ishwara pranavaha so that also is in the shabda brahman then little bit on om that itself is a major topic but to give connection to our uh, main theme as i said om is the name and form of uh, brahman om has five parts pancha pancha matratmaka pranavaha akara ukara makara and the half moon that you see on the top and then on the top of it we see bindu which is the origin so if you go from the other way we start from the bindu then expand manifest through the moon or the kalas then come through mu u a so that is the reverse process so you can see the involution and evolution going like that that is why om is very important om is of course is in buddhism jainism sikhism in addition to hinduism and it is recited along with prayers vedic chants rituals spiritual and philosophical gathering garbhopanishad says in the eighth month the baby in the womb listens to the sound of om in the womb and it's a very important uh, information then of course if you want to see the manifested sound of om we know that in the soham japa hakarena bahiryati sakarena vishet punaha that is when we are breathing in and out when we breathe out hakara then sakara is taken in so in that so when you so the soham comes there that omkara is the one that is connecting the exhalation inhalation and that is constantly happening and that is why some of the practices focus on meditation on the breathing now here the nama roopa i talked about we did uh, uh, some interesting comparison the right the left one you see is the omkara recited by a great yogi who is my spiritual mentor spiritual guru and 
So when we took that sound and did the spectral analysis and then took the components, the A's and the B's in the Fourier series, then made a plot of the complex coefficients A and B, you get a complex plot because the A and B's are the amplitude carrying constants, frequency it carries, right? So, on the right side, this is the one that is published in Journal of Acoustical Society a while ago. Uh, ohm, ohm sound produced by Tibetan lamas. As I said, it's practiced in many religions. And when it is plotted in this complex plot, you can see the form. This is the form that you get. Very similar. And also the frequency components is fairly close by. So what it means is there is a Vijnana. Of course, the word science is an English translation, kind of. Although it doesn't mean exactly the same. In Sanskrit, we use the word Vijnana. Vijnana or Vijnana. Vijnana does not exactly mean what science means. But we take it as translation. Vijnana means Vikasita Jnanam. One meaning. Other meaning is Vishishta Yoho Jnanam is Vijnanam. Basically what it is, Jnana is the destination of the knowledge. That is being there. That is Jnana. Vijnana is the process, the path which may takes you there. So the Rushis, Rushi means seer, Rusha Jnane, the one who has seen, seen from the innermost eye, the subtlest truth of the world, that is seer. And once the Rushi sees or is there, then the path that Rishi has taken, Rishika, Rishi, Rishi masculine, Rishika feminine, Rishi or Rishika who has taken and been there, that path is called Vijnana. That is why Rishi said, Vijnane na bhuta nijayante, Vijnane na jata nijivanti, Vijnanam prajantya bisam vishanti ti, tad brahmeti. So Vijnana is also Brahman because when we are going towards a goal, the path also becomes part of the goal, isn't it? It is not that we don't know anything and suddenly we end up in the goal. It never happens. And it should not happen. So, path itself is like that. So, that is uh, Vijnana. So, we see this interesting uh, thing. So, coming back to the tree again and to see where our Shabda Vijnana, Nada Vijnana, then we come to the mantras, the Veda mantras. And the creation, the Veda mantras are not a mental activity. What it means is, it should not be compared to a literary composition. Where somebody sits and get inspired in a very emotional way and compose. That is good, but that, that falls into the category of Kavya. That's, that's very good also. But the mantras, originate from a superconscious part of the seer received in the depth of the heart brought forward by the from the contemplation of his conscious mind finally bred out in the form of inevitable world what it means is when the rishi transcends the mind and uh, activities of the mind in the intellect form Beyond that, when uh, Rishi goes to that state and receives in the purest form of his medium, the knowledge, the vibrations, then transmits through the body as the vocal utterance or sound, then that becomes the mantra. So that is why mantra drashtara and mantra. So the two things. So that's very important to remember. So, which means, when we say Vedas are Aporushaya, what it means is, we have to rise to the level beyond intellect to resonate with the mantras. That's what it means. We should not make meaning of all the mantras in our 
uh, you know level of ordinary intelligence because it won't it won't it won't be understood properly we have to rise to that level and mantras are orally transmitted and there's a lot of acoustic knowledge here acoustical science when it is transmitted orally from guru to shishya to guru to shishya very precision is required and uh, so that is where the mantra transfer and because of the intonation we get the term swara swara is a beautiful thing swariyate iti swaraha that is the definition of swara what sounds is swara swara comes in music swara comes in vedas and swara comes in the language swara vyanjana like that so swara is very important then comes the music part of it so we know that the vedic swaras which are generally three mainly and they are connected to the sapta swaras in sanskrit or in sangeet and then we have the correspondence and that is how the origin of the music classical music in particular is related to the vedas hmm? that is the connection there and then we have various the phonetics and the japa the nada yoga and all of that comes there oral tradition is a very very important one i want to make a very important point if you see in literature people have written wrongly about oral tradition what i mean by that is in fact many people think oh oral tradition was there because there is no development of writing you know people were not advanced you know it's not it's not fully correct why because oral tradition was chosen by our rishis because of its efficiency isn't it see when you transmit knowledge through the writing lot of things get lost for example my own speech now see what what we are doing right now with the interaction with uh, live interaction here if you put the same thing in writing we we are going to lose a lot of information some knowledge will be transmitted but not precisely because the intonations the direct transmission from life force to life force so oral transmission was taken as the efficient means even today in the veda patashalas books are not kept serious veda patashala they don't allow books because the moment you hold a book your attention is gone attention to learn is gone music oral tradition dance oral tradition so oral tradition is a very important one that is why our rishis you know one of the most famous uh, shanti mantra om bhatram karne bhishtrunu yama deva the first thing they say bhadram karne bhishtrunu yama deva may our ability to hear be very strong and sound then bhadram pashye maksha bhirya datraha may our sight see the noble things then may our limbs be strong so that we can enjoy the life for the good will of all the levels people the divinities like that then this was recognized by unesco un world health uh, cultural heritage in 2003 that the oral tradition of the vedas is one of the uh, intangible cultural treasures of the world and that was good that it was and they also recognized the acoustical clarity aspect of it to ensure that the sound of each word remains unaltered hmm? you can see that now this veda mantras many i am sure all of us have heard the veda mantra it has been kept intact over thousands of years and the technology of keeping is a very interesting one because there are many vikrutis vikrutis means alternate forms of chanting so they take the mula that is samhita what is called then take it as different the uh, levels and more and more complex so that when it is retained in that form it is retained the whole thing intact i'll give a very simple demo 
we hear shiva panchakshari mantra the first one nama shivaya cha and that is called a samhita paata the first line then if you there are three words there namaha shivaya cha if you take that as 1 2 3 then pada paata becomes 1 2 and 3 then krama paata becomes 1 2 and 2 3 then jata paata becomes 1 2 2 1 1 2 2 3 3 2 2 3 then another very complex one ghana paata is referred as 1 2 2 1 1 2 3 3 2 1 1 2 3 then again 2 3 3 2 2 3 4 2, like that 4 3 2 2 3 4 2, 3, then again it goes 3 4 so like that it is maintained and acoustically it is transferred like that so let us hear this one namah shivaya cha that is samita pada namaha shivaya cha so you can see they are not changed so the line below is called anudattam the line above is called as swarita and without line is called as udartha this is how we uh, recognize so in the krama paata nama shivaya shivaya cha you can see that then if we take the jata paata jata means uh, like braiding you know here you can see 1 2 2 1 1 2 nama shivaya shivaya namo nama shivaya shivaya cha shivaya shivaya cha you can see then if you take the ghana paata nama shivaya nama shivaya shivaya namo nama shivaya cha shivaya namo nama shivaya cha shivaya cha shivaya shivaya cha like that it goes and you can see the signs of it here also it is not only beautiful melodic you know carrying energy of lord shiva but acoustically it is really bringing the swara shakti very beautifully and uh, so that's now when we come to this pronunciation articulation is very important i think there is a whole science of phonetics and articulation that is so well developed in hindu uh, thinking or hindu science and of course i'm sure many of you are familiar with this the great uh, shiva tandava uh, nataraja shiva nataraja and there the drum on his uh, right hand, upper hand the drum represents as i said the human body the two strings represent the prana pana the vital forces and when they interact the sounds are produced in the human system this is how sounds we produce sounds even normal speaking that is how the sound is produced in everybody the prana and apana is involved manara so and there the thing is it says unnatrutavasane nataraja rajo nanad dhakkam nava panchavaram uddhartu kamatsana kaadi siddhan etad vimarshe shiva sutra jalam so the nataraja beat the drum 9 and 5 times 14 and that become what is known as the sutras which further gave birth to sanskrit language that is how the seed sound and these you can see these sounds sound do sound like drum because when i recited these sutras without telling a a murdangam and tabla player they did say that it sounded like that so the sounds come like that so if you see to the left the bottom there you can see that i won i won ruruk evong i watch hyvarat land namagana nam jabai ghadadat jabagadadash kapa tadadach tadadab kapa ishatar hal so when you recite like that continuously the sound seeds coming out that comes like the drum sound and then of course we know the great panini so we have the sounds and the place of articulation so we have the kantha kantha is basically coming from the whole throat completely mouth open and then we have the tongue the talavya then murdhanya the upper part of the skull then danta the teeth and then the ostya the lip so you can see 
சூத்ராஸ் அகுஹ விசர்ஜனீயானாம் கண்டகா தட் இஸ் ஆ சவுண்ட் ஆஃப் ஆ கா 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 தட் கம்ஸ் ஃப்ரம் த ஃபுல் த்ரௌட் ஓப்பனிங் அண்ட் தென் ஹா தென் வி ஹாவ் இச்சுயேஷானாம் தாலு இ த டங் பிளேஸ் எ மேஜர் ரோல் ஹியர் அண்ட் சா சா ஜா ஜா லைக் தட் அண்ட் ரூ ரூ ரெஃபர் டு த the celebrum upper part of the celebrum the tongue hits the celebrum there and then you actually you can feel it r r ta ta da da when you say properly you can see ta ta da da you can feel the vibrations here that not only we are saying uh, accurate when we have to feel it there now and then we have r and to refer to ta ta da da and that is danta you can see that the teeth plays a major role and gyama gana na of course obvious nasal so like that we see the articulation is very important and this pronunciation is not only in terms of articulation it is important but also as a spiritual practice why see it's spiritual practice means there should be some transformation that is going on in the physical system also because spirituality means it's the whole thing mind body spirit all the three things are integrated so that means by reciting this the body gets activated in the proper direction proper orientation and when we produce a maha prana pa ka ta dha so you are producing with the energy coming out from the nabhi below nabhi so when we are all the time saying that we are making conscious effort to bring the energy upward and then it cleanses the whole thing that is why dr ramaji is here ayurveda also uses this mantra charakas the great charaka rushi advises in some situation to say vishnu sahasra nama so the mantras are also used from the therapeutic point of view also as a by product now a very simple uh, demo i can show you how it is scientific in the very realistic sense because it is kinetic energy and what is kinetic energy one half m is square so the velocity of air that is coming out here makes things move when we say maha prana so you can see here pa 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 ka ta da you can see it is moving if i don't say that properly pa ta da i'm saying it but not enough and sometimes if i don't say it what happens simply we are going through the act of saying but not receiving the effect we are not receiving the benefit of it that is why mantras have to be recited properly huh? in addition to bhakti shraddha is required and shraddha means these things shraddha means not just belief shraddha means action also that is why shraddha bhakti samanvita says in vishnu sahasranama so we can see a uh, very important aspect of it then so to see what some of the acoustical aspects of sanskrit is sound assigned to alphabet do not change and that is a very beautiful one why because once you learn if i write ka ka like that is it then you don't have to worry about it no matter where you write it is always ka so that acoustics and writing they are connected very closely desired words usually have some acoustic similarity with the root this is also very beautiful because if you take for example vid vid means to know vedas means knowledge vidyarthi means one who is anxious to know vidwan means one who knows vidyalaya means the place where you want to go to know see that word vid is bringing that acoustically this is very important why because memory the memory goes by association that is why memorizing in sanskrit is quite easier 
initially some effort has to be put but once we put that effort then it becomes very uh, uh, easy soft aspirant hard aspirant i showed you very good correlation that i showed you easy for memorization we talked about effect of sandhi relates to the places of utterance this is a beautiful one see a plus e is a that's called guna sandhi now a comes from kantha a like that right e comes from basically talu that is tongue now when we bring the kantha that is throat and the uh, tongue together the only sound that can come is a no, no other sound simple experiment you take the word ganesha it is made up of two words gana plus isha so what i do is now gana i leave say time break say one one two or three seconds gana isha now i reduce the time between gana isha gana isha gana isha now you make time zero the only way you can produce that combination is ganesha no other sound can come you can do the experiment yourself later there is no other way you can produce the sound this is the beauty see this is this is what the practical so when you say acoustical uh, science this is science hmm? thandis are so natural in that sense so very important so sir c v raman i'm sure all of us uh, know this great man and he had a fascination for acoustics and uh, i don't know how many of you know this he started his work with acoustics in his scientific career then i <laughs> got uh, you know uh, attracted to optics good good for us good for the country good for him uh, he got the nobel prize and all that then later he came back to acoustics again in his later years uh, very beautiful and i will show some of his work later also so he says it would form a fascinating chapter of history to try and trace the gradual development of musical instruments and musical knowledge from the rhythmic chanting of rigveda in the ancient home of the aryan to the classical indian music of the present day i fully agree with him because there is a continuity from the vedas of antiquity to the music of the current it is there it is that we have to know it we have to trace it it's already built in hmm? we have to trace that that's all that is why if we see the great uh, musical stalwarts you know especially like tyagaraja for example he gives there is a whole number of krutis compositions on, uh, from tyagaraja just on this nada shabda so that connection hmm? very interesting so little bit on our uh, the nada sh- shabda world see the tantra is another place where we see a good amount of nada and shabda chaitanyam sarvabhutanam shabda brahmeti me matihi so now we have the two main words that we use terms shabda and nada now nada is seen more like a flowing energy shabda is seen little more like a crystallized one one like water and other is ice both both are the same but one is flowing and other is little bit formed so we will see that we will see that beautiful uh, connection so that is shabda brahman Ch- that is chaitanyam so namaste Ch- chaitanyam is shabda brahman then in the first prayer that i did before i started from the singita ratnakara this is anada brahma chaitanyam sarvabhutana vivrutam jagadatmana it became vivartavada that means became manifested and that is called nada brahman and this nada brahman is anandam now ananda basically refers to the true joy the joy that is naturally available see when we see beautiful uh, sky clear sky i'm sure everybody feels happy because nobody can take you know ownership I, i did it nobody can want to take right everybody feels happy you go to the ocean everybody is happy why 
motion is not uh, making advertisement it is that is the way it is and we are, everybody receives that uh, uh, vision and sound so like this this nada brahman is everywhere and the moment you tune to it you get happy yeah joyful that's what uh, this beautiful then we have nanadena vinagitam nanadena vinasvaraha nanadena vinanrutyam tasman nadatmakam jagat so there is no music there is no speech there is no dance very interesting the dance the heart of the dance is music you stop the music you stop the dance very interesting see in live music you may not recognize it in recorded music we recognize it many times what happens in concert when people don't have the live music they have recorded music for some technical glitch the music stops the dancer stops right so that is so what is driving what is a very interesting one both are both are important so nada and shabda very panini gives a very beautiful uh, uh, definition akasha vayu prabhava sharira samucharan vakra mupaiti nada akasha refers to basically space space and vayu is the uh, air within and uh, which is the indication of prana shakti as i uh, said earlier so when that interacts within the nada develops and when that nada shakti comes through sthanantareshu vaktra mupaiti when it comes through the vocal cavity produced like words it becomes shabda as i said water and ice one has form other has formless then shabdho dhvanischa varnascha mridangaadi bhavo dhvanihi so dhvani is basically coming from the throat and the other one varna comes through the mouth which is the language alphabet so that is another the dhvani is another word from the shabda so that is why we have the musical instruments everything comes through dhvani speech everything comes through varna and they both form the shabda now this is a very inspire inspiring statement just as from a seed comes naturally sprout branch leaf flower unripe fruit and full fruit likewise starting from spiritual light as seed the nada swara and aksharas have developed into various aspects of knowledge because we talked about nada brahman which is going with the shabda brahman so they combined as the root music should become the bridge that takes the listener from the sensual level to spiritual level it has to it is a connection from senses to the spirit if it stops only in the mind level then we are not using the full power of it that's all it does give some anoranjan but we are not fully utilizing its capacity we have to go even above through the anoranjan we have to go to atma ranjan when you go to that it gives full so this is uh, by my spiritual guru actually yogi sri sri ranga sadguru this is a very important veda mantra probably one of the key slides here see when we say speech that is what you are hearing is the last quarter of the whole process what you are getting at your ear is the last quarter so what this veda mantra rugveda mantra says there is three quarters behind it now not only we should know it that there are four four thing four aspect but we also should have an understanding and ability to deal with that why because then our output we can we can control isn't it when you know the whole process you can control the output otherwise you will not be able to control so what are the four so what you are getting at your ear is called vaikhari vaikhari means fully orchestrated fully manifested at your level at your point now when we go back from known to unknown 
right? Known to unknown. So I come back. So I come back to the, my mouth, my curry. But still I have to go back because I already produced here. When I go back, it is coming through here. Madhyama, because this is the medium. Right? This physical medium. I mean, kanta. If there is no throat, that's so madhyama. But before it comes, it's here. It is pashyanti. That is, as I want to say, I am I'm, I'm seeing, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing what I want to say in a very quick way. I mean, when you are talking, that's what you are doing also. Everybody has to do these four stages. So it is, uh, it's uh, seeing. And before you come to that, you have to have that energy to even make, make that happen. And that is para, which is all pervading. Now, a beautiful example, this para pashyanti madhyama vaikhari, you, we can use to explain everything. It's not just only sound. In, from sound, we, it's easy to understand. You can explain everything. Even starting this meeting, you can explain. You go from the uh, known to unknown. For example, here. See, we, when I turn the water, I get the water in the tap. That is Vaikari. Because I'm able to hold and drink. Now, where did the water come to that place? If you go back, it has to come from a reservoir, wherever it is. And that is the medium, Madhyama. But where did it come to the reservoir? It has to come from rain. Now, that is Pashyanti. Now, where did it come to the reservoir? The clouds. I don't see water in the cloud. Then they say, you need the, for that Rishi Drishti. It can be seen, but you need a Rishi Drishti. The, the development of the inner eye, yogic eye, which everybody can uh, go after. As I said earlier, this is uh, open knowledge. Rishi's knowledge are open. That is why they didn't put any patent, they don't charge, it's free. But because it involves so much of, uh, you know, Sadhana and titiksha and everything, that, uh, you know, so the point here is this, this uh, very important, this Chetwari work, Parimita Padani. And <clears throat> now when you bring that into the speech production, very, very nice uh, ch ch causal chain, Atma Vivakshamano Yam Manah Manah Prerayate. So the soul, the inner person wishes, then that activates the mind. So I activate my mind. Come on, go to action now. Then the mind, what it does is, Manaha Nabhistam Vanni Mahananti Saprayrayati Marutam. So this mind, what it does is, it takes the fire element, which is in the Nabhisthana in the stomach, in the area. So that is where the heat element. So it takes the heat and then it takes, it inspires the maruta, that is air. Because we produce sound when we exhale, basically. Our speech is coming out when you are exhaling. It is very hard, probably next to impossible, to inhale and, and speak. Eh? Even if you try, it won't happen. So speech usually, we have to exhale and so then it comes, then both combine heat and air through the organs. Na Brahma Granti Sito Nadaha Kramad Urdhapate Charan Nabi Hrutkanta Murdha Stosha Avir Bhavati Sadhvani. And same words or similar words, Thyagaraja in one of his composition, he has written this Nabi Hrutkanta like that. So you can see the and various chakras positions is also given here. And one more slide which gives a little more. Ah, this is another very important slide. Because, see, when, when the sound is, when I speak, at the mouth level, two, two systems should work together in harmony, very important. The biological system and the psychological system. 
what do i mean by that the psychological system means see when you see in the top one vaikari shabda nishpattihi the sounds are coming out as vaikari but behind it i have to get the words right before i say it through the mouth i have to get the words where do the words come from from my library but where is the library memory library we call vocabulary if i don't have it already there it won't come so madhyama smriti gochara so we may so finally in the memory that is the point the memory has to be there the, now to the memory you come from where from the intention jyoti karthasya because i have to uh, get that actual intentive word i cannot just use any word the intention has to be there what i want to communicate all those things should happen quickly for every speaker then beha- behind that is all pervading so you have the psychological you have the biological you come here and beautiful merger of the two produces speech the this modern science has not spoken in this way modern science also has lung some memory i don't know but the element like this connecting from the para from the muladhara to the vaikhari kanta desha from all this holistic connection is something that we see very clearly so when you see the vaikhari in four dimension of expression speech language in the top literature figures of speech in the uh, right one mantra japa in the uh, lower one and music vocal instrument dance in third one then here we see the speaker to listener resonance very important the speaker to listener what it says is this is very phenomenal actually this this is this uh, if we understand and bring it into practice no more quarrels anywhere in the human world but it's very difficult to employ now what it means is see the speaker is speaking through all the experiences that i am taking from my five senses i am converting it to speech medium and giving it out now you as the listener you have to take it attentively and faithfully convert it back to your five senses very important see if i am telling something about test i bring it with my anubhava experience i bring it through and you take it and you have to transfer it back into experiential world of tongue if you don't do it then you miss that element so so the perfect communication occurs from my five five sensual experience to your five sensual experiences and speech carries it through and this is this is where no other sense can do that only speech and vedic order of elements is a very beautiful one um, this order is given from the vedas that is kam vayur jyotira ap prithivi like that it gives the space air fire water earth and the senses of perception now the space and sound they are connected you cannot describe space from any other way only through sound you change the space that means you change enlarge the space sound changes you remove the you open the door you connect that room to this sound changes very very interesting observation you see so our rishis uh, very nicely connected vaisheshika sutra is that shabda gunam akasha that is the sutra now very quick one some application i'm coming to some application this is we have done sound as we see in a temple sacred sound how how beautiful it is in in a sacred sound in temple to the left one you see a regular temple and to the right one in uh, near bangalore this is a rock uh, cave rock temple rock cut cave temple so you have to go under the ground it is formed in a beautiful rock 
very beautiful and here so let me have a few uh, video uh, thing okay ah, here now as you see here i want you to focus in the garbhagruha the sound is produced mantras kanshal see how the sound pattern is coming out to the ardha mantapa and you see compare to the human figure there you see them so this is the garbhagraha right the face is the garbhagraha this is the ardha mantapa the throat and this is the maha mantapa so as the sound is produced it is coming through and expanding here and that's what happens when you recite when you say a song say anything you, you feel through so that is what really you are seeing like i can see the human form here and that is coming from there and that is coming to the chakras see very beautiful uh, connection here then here i want to uh, make you listen see this is in a totally absorbing environment it is not a temple it is simply absorbing no reflection at all from anywhere now you see here mantra shankha ghanta jagata all these things and if you see here only sound oh compare that to this this is in the temple you can see the reflection and reverberation coming out of the ardha mantapa and coming to the maha mantapa you can see very clearly the sound is surrounding uh, the devotee and these are the frequency peaks you can see uh we don't have too much time to go into that basically what we have to know from this is it covers spread out in our audio range and what that means is we are given a a a, a positive and a beautiful uh, ambience and excitement in a in a sacred environment through this acoustical frequencies and that is the uh, meaning we have to take and this is another beautiful uh, experience this is in the kanshal in the uh, cave temple and i want you to note one thing here uh, somewhere in the middle my blowing stops blowing of the kanshal then you hear only the reflection and this uh, cave temple is about 80 meters long uh, 80 meters something like 250 60 feet very long and uh, it's uh, so you can see here ah you see my my blowing stops and it continue now this is another beautiful uh, thing here we are chanting in the ardha mantapa and ardha mantapa is the first arrow that is going in near the near the murti and 270 meters about 200 uh, feet or so right in the second arrow we are recording we are recording in both places and you see the clarity in spite of the high echo uh, that is the important thing to see here so you can see om namo bhagavate So you hear the same thing, recording at the same time, but a two hundred and twenty meter down the temple. You can see the echo, but you also have the clarity. 
So you can see that uh, uh, echo and the Now here, uh, corn shell, uh, I blew it in the, I mean, I, <laughs> I didn't blew it in a literary sense, I produced the sound. You know, normally when I say I blew it, it means you break it. <laughs> I didn't do that. Uh, I blew it, uh, I produced the sound earlier. And you see, the speciality of this is, uh, you see the figure down, that is the cross section of the conch shell. Very, very intricate, produced by nature. It's like a cochlea inside. So what it does is, because of its curved, curved space area, the sound that I hear I am putting it in here gets clarified, purified because of that curvy path. And when it comes out, it comes out with a pure sound. What do you mean by pure sound? Single frequency. In acoustics, pure sound means single frequency. So you can see the tone. See first peak, see how, how high, very sharp. It is not easy to produce that kind of tone even from a well-designed instrument. Hmm? It is that difficult. But nature has given us. So you can see, you can hear the sound. So you can see that whole thing. And what we did was we took that geometry and when you produce, put it in drawing, it's like an a elliptic uh, cross section. You take the two major and minor cross section and make it as a horn. So it is like a horn, but in a curved spiral. Here there is a flute. And uh, what we have done in this is we have taken a regular bamboo flute and I wanted to know how the length ratios are done because they, when the bamboo flute is done, people do it by listening. You know, nobody, you know, actually measure, you know, they you do it uh, by listening and they know by... This. Then I calculated to, and compared to the Pythagorean scale, you see that experiment and theory. You can see that ratio. I took, uh, saw 837. And then you can see the re, higher re flat, you know, 1 1 1.09, 1.07, 1.14. You can see a good comparison between the Pythagorean scale and our regular bamboo flute that we hear. And this shows that how the knowledge is universal. That's the point I'm making. This is where Sir C.B. Raman, one of the other great contribution, uh, he was the first one to show experimentally uh, see, tabla and mridangam has a very unique acoustic quality. That is, see, it is a two-dimensional structure, right? Two-dimensional two structure means like a plate, like a plate like this. See, strings, if you take string one-dimensional, automatically it is harmonic. One length, you make the length half, you get the higher, the, double the frequency, it's easy. But here it is not like that because of the uh, plate. So what it does is, uh, it produces all types of frequencies. That is why you get, you get annoyed. If I start doing like this for some time, you will get annoyed. Everybody gets annoyed. But with the Mridangam and Tabla, because of that uh, central uh, Karanai, we call Karanai, uh, iron oxide and some material is put there, mercury and all that thing. So that black thing, putting properly, you get up to five frequencies harmonic. That means it is 100, 200, 300, 400, 500 hertz like that. So when you combine all of them, it is beautiful. So that is why tabla and mridangam, you can listen alone. Only tabla and mridangam, you can listen for hours together, but not any drum alone. 
because of that. So, that is a very beautiful uh, and uh, mathematical equations are all formed and shown and all that uh, recently. Then this is another, uh, we are coming to uh, here, uh, the Veena. Veena is, we represents our spinal cord. In fact, in uh, there is a Veda Mantra, Daivi Manushi Veena Bhavati, like that. So what it is, as you can see here, this is the drawing based on uh, our, uh, my uh, spiritual uh, mentor, Sri Ranga Sadhguru's drawing. So you can see here, the Veena represents and uh, the human spinal cord and that is called Kurma. Actually, it's uh, in uh, musical language also it's called as Kurma. Basically, it's the base of a turtle and it is said, uh, you know, when we have uh, the Kurmasana, we, you know, it's a yogic term, uh, we will, uh, we will save it for another uh, lecture. What I wanted to show here, how acoustics plays a very beautiful role in Hindu, Hinduism. It, it has a science role, it has an art role, it has a social uh, integration role, it has all kinds of uh, beautiful roles. And that is the beauty of it in festivals, in all of that. So this is a procession, Utsav, we, and as we know, uh, in temp temples have to do Utsavs and all the festivals where they take the deity into the street with all music and everything. So that people who are unable to come also get the benefit of the blessings uh, at their home. So because God is for everybody. So with that, this is the procession done in New York. Uh, very uh, uh, beautiful one. I have a small uh, clip of that. Oh, Ganesh brings me here. How do I feel? It's amazing. I mean, I wouldn't miss this. I did this. I've been doing this for many years. There's an incredible pujas. Inc So, to end uh, my humble presentation with uh, a small poem that I wrote uh, about music. Ah, oh, music, are you the flow of sound or in silence the feelings of mind? Can you be described as frequencies or as thoughts through sound waves? From speech, how do you differ? How do you cross language barrier? What makes you good or bad as you infer influence listener's mood? What makes you so powerful, although you are invisible? Various emotions come through you, dancing patterns depend on you. Is your secret harmony or is your strength melody? Or is it the lyric with memory or the rhythm in which you vary? What you are, it's hard to say. Whatever you are, give us peace and joy. So this is about... Uh, to conclude, Sound plays an important role in both scientific and spiritual aspects of uh, Hinduism. Anything that moves produces sound. Sound carries information. That is a very important one. Every sound carries information. There is no sound that does not carry information. Please check it out. This statement is a very powerful statement. Hmm? <coughs> but not all information we are able to uh, understand, that is a different thing, but it does carry. Then Vedas emphasize that the ubiquity of manifested sound is integrally related to universal consciousness. This is another topic that I am working very closely now, sound and consciousness. It is very directly connected. 
Fourfold description of nada leading to manifested sound enabled the seeker to advance towards the universal consciousness. The role of manifested sound vaikari is seen in many areas of human interest such as speech, chants, vocal and instrumental music. And I deeply am grateful to my Guru, Sri Ranga Sadguru of First Time Venu Mandiram, my two, and also various my colleagues and my students uh, who have worked with me. And thanks all of you, of course, I... Thank you.